New video from the Navy shows what may be the future of modern close-in warfare. It's their new laser gun, which is shown hitting targets on ships at sea and shooting a drone out of the sky. The United States Navy is the most powerful naval force in the world, but why do they pose such a threat? The Navy ensures that its naval troops are well-trained, equipped, and ready for battle in order to protect maritime freedom, win battles, and prevent aggression. The United States Navy is very proficient in the use of all military hardware, from Humvees to aircraft carriers. The United States Navy keeps vigilance and readiness to defend America's interests around the world and along its maritime frontiers. This has given them a powerful military force, one that can thrive in the ever-changing ocean environment. And now, the U.S. Navy has come clean with a startling revelation. They admitted that they had made something that is unstoppable due to its superior technology. Come along as we explore the unstoppable invention of the U.S. Navy. The Department of the Navy was founded on April 30, 1798, while the Navy was founded on October 13, 1775. In 2019, the Navy had more than 332,000 active duty personnel and around 104,000 reserve personnel. The Navy is tasked with protecting America's maritime borders and providing assistance to other armed services. It is constantly on guard and prepared to defend American interests both at home and abroad. They are now a powerful force that can function effectively and efficiently in the vast and chaotic ocean. All sizes of ships make up the surface fleet the Navy possesses a ship suitable for every waterborne military duty, whether it is providing insertion or cover for special operations on inland rivers or confronting contemporary pirates on the high seas. The Navy's submarine fleet, also referred to as the Silent Service, has been used in both war and peace for a century and has performed a variety of tasks, including attack, surveillance, commando insertion, research, and nuclear deterrence. The Navy can use submarines to get there before the enemy is aware they are approaching. The Navy can offer firepower and support from the air in addition to its capabilities for surface and submarine combat. Helicopters, fighter attack jets, surveillance, transport and cargo aircraft, as well as unmanned aerial vehicles UAV, make up the Navy's aviation fleet. The shore establishment provides the operating forces with support in the form of communication centers, training grounds and simulators, ship and aircraft repair facilities, storage spaces for repair parts, fuel and ammunition, medical and dental facilities, and air bases. It also provides construction, intelligence, and meteorological support. The Navy offers many high-tech employment and has an amazing selection of ships, aircraft, and other equipment. The U.S. Navy's Aircraft Division at the Naval Air Warfare Center has submitted a series of patents that, in principle, might transform not only military aviation, but almost everything. One of these peculiar new innovations is a high-energy electromagnetic field generator, which, if it works as intended, has the potential to generate enormous amounts of power with serious military and economic consequences. The patent's design is strikingly similar to theories proposed by UFO researchers decades ago concerning the possible propulsion systems used by extraterrestrial visitors to Earth. You haven't seen anything yet, if you think this narrative is wild. Through a Freedom of Information Act request, Brett Tingley at the War Zone obtained new documents related to these patents in January. Hundreds of pages of papers, technical drawings, data, and images have been released by the Navy, and the War Zone has been at the forefront of analyzing these peculiar patents ever since they first surfaced more than two years ago. Perhaps the strangest thing that could come out of this research is an electromagnetic propulsion technology that would allow the Navy to construct its own flying saucers. In addition, the concept of a compact fusion reactor is discussed, which, as stated in the aforementioned documents, may pave the way for the development of a space-time modification weapon. These patents originated from the research of Dr. Salvatore Pais, an aerospace engineer with the United States Navy. As far-fetched as his ideas may seem to us, the Navy evidently sees merit in them. It has been established that the Navy has invested about $466,000 into this program since 2017 to see it through to maturity.
Payeyes has been given sole credit for three patents, all of which sound like they were written by the Federation rather than the United States Navy and could easily be discussed by Geordi LaForge and his android buddy Data on the bridge of the Federation's Enterprise. The plasma compression fusion device has the potential to be used in the creation of a space-time modification weapon, SMW, which, under the right circumstances, could make the hydrogen bomb look like a firecracker. Is this new technology genuine, and what is it exactly? In that respect, the plot thickens, as if the expression Z-pinch with a fusion twist weren't already dense enough. To be sure, Pais is not the first individual to claim that he is close to successfully building a small fusion reactor, which has long been the holy grail of energy experts and researchers. Lockheed Martin submitted a patent in 2018 for a fusion reaction containment system that, according to their filings, would be utilized in a compact fusion reactor that could be housed within the fuselage of an F-16 fighter jet. This was a full year before the Navy filed their application. Today's nuclear power facilities use fission reactors to generate electricity, but a fusion reactor would be an entirely new approach. While fusion reactors certainly exist in principle, they have never been developed to the point where they might be utilized to generate power on Earth, although researchers at MIT did manage to generate excess power with their fusion reactor. Fusion power would involve fusing two or more nuclei together to form a single, heavier element. Most likely, hydrogen atoms would be fused into a single helium atom, as opposed to the nuclear reactors used in everything from power plants to aircraft carriers, which produce power by splitting a nucleus into two lighter nuclei. Despite the fact that one application for this technology could be the most devastating weapon mankind has ever devised, the same technology could theoretically nip many potential wars in the bud by ending humanity's reliance on fossil fuels, provided that a fusion reactor can be built that is both safe and efficient. After all, at its core, much conflict stems from squabbling over limited supplies. If fusion could provide practically infinite energy, we wouldn't need nearly as much competition. Fusion power has the potential to be significantly safer than the conventional fission methods of producing energy. It's a popular fallacy that nuclear power stations can explode during a meltdown like a nuclear weapon, but the fallout from a meltdown is still quite severe, as we saw in locations like Chernobyl and Fukushima. Radiation levels are greatly increased by these runaway chain reactions. On the other hand, fusion is safe from this runaway effect and has the added benefit of not creating nuclear waste. Using only roughly 25 pounds of hydrogen isotopes, deuterium and tritium, Lockheed Martin predicted that its tiny fusion reactor could create a continual supply of 100 megawatts of power, enough to run an entire aircraft carrier or power the homes of over 100,000 people. Not bad for something that fits in the F-16's air intake. This leads us back to the work of Dr. Salvatore Cesar Paez, whose fusion power research appears to be closely following that of Lockheed Martin's team. Pais may have also discovered the keys to an exotic new kind of propulsion and a potentially ominous new weapon along the way. Dr. James Sheehy, Chief Technology Officer of the U.S. Naval Aviation Enterprise, has expressed concern that this technology may be beyond the grasp of our current resources. But the United States isn't the only dog in this fight. Sheely informed patent examiner Philip Bonzel that China is already investing significantly in this area and that the United States would prefer the U.S. hold the patent as opposed to paying forever more to use this revolutionary technology because this will become a reality. There's no way to tell if the Navy and Dr. Pais have made any significant progress in their research at this point, but the most recent document dump does show that they haven't proved or disproved the premise behind his high-energy electromagnetic field generator in their experiments to date. It appears inevitable that work on the space-time modification weapon will continue for the time being. However, one thing is certain, if and when this technology is perfected, it could be used to radically alter virtually every aspect of our current world or even to blow it all up. The United States Navy has also just acquired two state-of-the-art laser cannons with the capability of destroying aerial drones. Using tremendous quantities of power, these so-called high-energy lasers may soon be installed on active warships. The lasers, which were made by Lockheed Martin, can be used to destroy small drones and boats. However, by increasing the power from 150 kilowatt per shot to 300 kilowatt, incoming missiles can be destroyed before they reach their targets. 
the U.S. Navy spent $192 million on the pair of cannons, but that is a minor price to pay considering the increased security the Mega Lasers will provide. One laser will stay on Earth and be utilized for testing military technology. However, an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer ship will be equipped with the second laser weapon, according to Motherboard. Regrettably, the price of the U.S. Navy's deal with Lockheed Martin could rise to around $1 billion. According to a U.S. Department of Defense release, Lockheed Martin Aculite Corp. E will create two test units and deliver them soon. It is the USA's most recent attempt to stay up with China in terms of military defense modernization. Admiral William Moran, who was Deputy Chief of Naval Operations at the time, stated in 2016, low-cost directed energy weapons must be a part of our future. If we have to keep using projectiles to defend ourselves, we will eventually run out, he added. China may be working on a scary ship-mounted railgun that would greatly improve the country's naval warfare capabilities, according to recent reports. Images circulating online, according to experts, show the battleship Haiyang Shan being outfitted with the cutting-edge armament, an example of a weapon that uses strong electromagnets to propel projectiles to extremely high speeds is a railgun. When launching ammunition, conventional guns frequently use explosives or propellants, but a railgun can attain a far higher muzzle velocity thanks to electromagnetic forces. This means that a railgun may fire bullets at speeds up to 3 km per hour, compared to a regular gun's maximum of 2 km per hour. Additionally, it eliminates the need to transport explosive propellants or warheads, potentially making rail-mounted warships far safer than conventional craft. The Navy is indeed becoming very interested in lasers. Directed energy weapons will soon be carried by nine destroyers. The U.S. Navy is planning to use a more potent laser while also increasing the deployment of a new laser weapon. The non-lethal optical dazzling interdictor Navy, Odin device, is being installed on more Navy destroyers. Later this year, the service will upgrade the destroyer USS Preble with a more potent laser called the High Energy Laser and Integrated Optical Dazzler and Surveillance, Helios. The Odin is carried by three guided missile destroyers of the Arleigh Burke class. Six destroyers will use the laser by the end of the year, and two more will in the years that follow. Why is the Navy fitting lasers to nuclear submarines? Odin is a non-lethal weapon system that is intended to blind and break rather than to kill and destroy. The laser is designed to disable electro-optical sensors such as infrared and digital video cameras on drones, making it impossible for remote operators to control them or use the cameras to gather intelligence. As seen here, even relatively low-power lasers can irreparably harm camera sensors. Helios, on the other hand, is a laser with greater objectives and is noticeably more potent. The Navy expects that the weapon will be potent enough to destroy approaching cruise missiles, even if it can confuse camera sensors like Odin. The cruisers and destroyers of the United States Navy each have a set number of vertical launch silos that can store a variety of missiles and rockets. These can be used against aircraft, other ships, and even submarines. When stocking these silos, the Navy must give careful consideration to both offensive and defensive weapons. As the People's Liberation Army Navy of China expands, it will need to carry more missiles to destroy enemy vessels at sea. A ship's offensive missile capacity decreases in direct proportion to the number of defensive missiles it carries. To counter subsonic anti-ship cruise missiles like the Russian SSN-27 Sizzler or the Chinese YJ-18, the Navy is banking on Helios developing into a reliable anti-missile system. To destroy an oncoming cruise missile, Helios might target its warhead, sensors, or control surfaces with lasers of intense heat. Killing the missile's warhead would cause it to explode, but killing its sensors would prevent it from reaching its objective. By igniting the missile's control surfaces, we may render it aerodynamically unstable and send it plummeting into the water. Powerful lasers are needed to engage a missile with one. For the heat to work, the laser must remain focused on a single spot on the missile for an extended period of time. Lasers must be powerful enough to withstand the energy loss while still being able to intercept missiles at a safe distance as they travel through the atmosphere, especially through sea fog and mist. The Navy is keeping quiet about Helios's capability, but it is apparent that it believes the new laser has a chance of succeeding in the anti-missile duty. If Helios is successful, the ship using it would have an anti-missile system that could launch a theoretically infinite amount of missiles, 
This would enable the ship to carry more offensive missiles and fewer defense missiles like the evolved Sea Sparrow in its armored silos. Meanwhile, the United States Navy has developed a new weapon to silence its citizens. The portable acoustic hailing and disruption gadget records a person's words and then repeats them, disorienting them and discouraging them from continuing to speak. It's unlikely that this technology will ever be used on the battlefield, despite being an interesting and very familiar concept. Engineers at the Navy's Research and Development Unit in Indiana, specializing in handheld and crew-served weaponry, created the Handheld Acoustic Hailing and Disruption, AHAD. According to New Scientist, the patent was officially granted this year. In the patent application, the system is described as follows. One specific implementation of the current revelation involves reflecting the target's words back to them twice, once immediately, and once after a delay. The speaker experiences what is known as Delayed Auditory Feedback DAF, as a result of this lag. The human body is accustomed to the tiny delay in response experienced during normal speech. When a second delayed audio feedback source is introduced, it becomes difficult for the speaker to maintain focus and keep talking. This innovation is instantly recognizable to anyone with siblings. Ahad is like a digital brother who repeats everything you say just after you say it, sometimes in a creepy or comedic voice. Only a sibling would do it to annoy another sibling, whereas the government might utilize the system to put an end to a riot or unlawful gathering. According to the application, the system can be used in a very covert manner because by utilizing directional microphones and speakers, only a target speaker's voice will be picked up by the system, and only a target speaker will hear the transmitted audio. A victim of Ahad may be so shocked that they cannot speak, and so confused that no one else around them can hear what they are hearing. Those around them may be just as perplexed as they are by the person's sudden silence. In other words, it can give you the impression that you're crazy and give others the same impression about you. If the machine is using the disruption technique, it is most effective if it repeats speech one syllable after the rhythm of the speaker. Strangely, it really improves the public speaking skills of some people, presumably those with Mick Jagger's levels of self-confidence. There is not enough reliability in the impact to warrant taking this technology beyond the lab. Additional uses can be found for the technology. It can also serve as a standard acoustic hailing device, allowing you to communicate with other ships or issue them orders. An even more intriguing claim is that, by aiming AHAD system at a wall or corner, AHAD system can also project sound to the target surface, such that audio appears to originate from the target. AHAD is a type of non-lethal weaponry, which aims to do its damage without killing anyone in the process. The long-range acoustic device is just one of many non-lethal sonic weapons utilized by the United States Navy. It uses focused sonic waves to communicate pain at extremely high decibel levels. People abandon the region because they are in so much pain, and the after-effects can last for days or even weeks. All these inventions show that the United States Navy isn't to be played with. They might be unstoppable. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space. Vi